Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. The, the Lord just downloaded this message in my heart and, and uh, it's so powerful and I know it will change your life. And I, I just want to get right into that. So yeah, Exodus 3 verse 7, I'll be reading from King James. If you could, uh, if you're in the house or even in your home, uh, it's kind of our tradition to read the, the verses together. So I want to challenge you to read with me today. And uh, because, you know, uh, I believe and I, I, it's, it's the word of God, but faith comes by hearing, right? Faith is how, how we, it's the filter by which we, we live our life. You know, uh, if you take on the whole armor of God, right? And you, you have in your left hand, that's the way I always do it. You have the whole armor of God. You take in your left hand the shield of faith, okay? It's, it's everything has to pass through faith to come to me and it has to go through faith to go out of me, amen? And so when I, when I hold up the shield of faith, it's to stop what's coming at me, amen? But it's also for me to live out, amen, what God has put in me, amen? And, and uh, really kind of powerful when you think about it because we have the breastplate of righteousness, which is Jesus Christ, okay? And we have the shield of faith. So I have two filters that I have to pass through before I can get out into the world, amen? So when I start talking like, oh, I'm so tired, you should really think about, I'm so blessed. I have so much faith. I have so much hope. I have so much inside of me. And stop, stop speaking words out of your mouth that are, are contrary to the word of God, amen? Let's start living out what God is. I'm not going to tell you that I don't ever get discouraged because I do. Amen. I get discouraged sometimes every day. Okay. Because there's some stuff in my life. When I look at it, I, I think it's impossible. But then I remember, I remember what God did for me yesterday. I remember the deliverance that he promises in the word of God. I remember to lift my eyes to the hill from whence comes my help. Amen. Who needs some help today? Amen. We need, we need help. And that, I'm going to tell you, help comes from above. It doesn't come from anybody down here. Amen. God knows what he's doing when he made me. God knows what he's doing when he made you. God knows what he's doing when he give you all the gifts and all the talents that you have. He knew what he was doing. Amen. And all I have to do is just line up with what he says. Amen. I just got to line up with the word of God and I got to stand on that. Amen. And I got to rise. Oh, I'm getting my head of myself. Ain't I? I've started preaching a little bit right there. Let me just back up and read for a minute. Okay. Read with me. Read with me. Exodus 3 verses 7 through 10. Are you ready? On the count of three, really, really with your baritone voice, with that, with that abdomen, you know, you got to push that words out and act like you're, act like you got a little boldness, okay? Let's just read together. Ready? One, two, three, go. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I have known their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the, hand, the land unto a good land and a large and unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Parasites and the Hivites and the Cellulites and the Jebusites and the, and the what, are, what are those guys? And now therefore, nine, verse nine, now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, and thou, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Amen? Do you, do you believe in cycles? Do you believe in cycles? Do you ever think that in your life you go through cycles? You know, you go through the cycles, you get up in the morning, you go to sleep at night, right? You set your alarm probably for the same time every day during the week and probably for a different time on the weekend. Okay, you have a cycle in your life. You get hungry, right? You eat, you get full, okay? <laughs> a little while goes on, you get hungry, you eat, and it gets full. You know, you know your, your hair, my, uh, every, every three or four weeks, I go get my hair cut, okay? Because <laughs> it keeps growing, all right? I don't know why it grows, but it just keeps growing. Sometimes I have to clip my toenails, okay? I don't know about you, but maybe you don't ever have to clip. Maybe your toenails don't grow. But it's important that you understand that there are cycles that happen in your life. And, and in this portion of Scripture, above and beneath, okay, uh, I'm going to take verse 8 and slide it over, okay, and put a pin in it because I'm not going to talk about that this week. But I am going to talk about that next week, okay? Well, we slid verse 8 out, and you'll see a cycle that happens in these, in these few verses. You, you see a cry, right? 
there's some people crying. <laughs> you guys know anybody that cries? <laughs> you know anybody that cries? <laughs> come on, if you got a brother or you got a sister, come on, you know somebody that cries. If you, if you go to church building, you know somebody that cries. If you, got a <laughs> if you got people you work with, you know somebody that cries. Okay, but there's a cry, there's a call. Come on, there's a call. Every time there's a cry, there's a call. I'm going to tell you right now, every single time there's a cry, there's always a call. Amen? And then, and then we have a cause, okay? So we have a cry, a call, and a cause. Say that with me together. Cry, call, cause, okay? So I'm gonna ask, let me ask you, I'm going to go backwards with you. What is your cause this morning? Let me hide behind the pulpit. <laughs> what, what's your cause? Because see, some of us have a cause, but we don't really know what it is, but everybody else does. Okay? Everybody that talks to you knows your cause because you're always talking about it. That's really powerful, Pastor Ever. I hope, I hope, I hope everybody else gets that. Because <laughs> nobody wants to really admit it. Okay? We don't really want to admit that our cause is really. But I want to tell you, God didn't call you to have a cause that was inside your body, okay? In between your ears. He didn't call you for a cause for that. He called you for something bigger. Say, say it with me. Say bigger. 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 There's a bigger cause for you. And turn to your neighbor, look him right in the eye, okay? I know you might be at home. Some of you at home, look at the cat, okay? And look at the dog. Look at the little hamster. Say, you know what? I got a bigger cause. I got a bigger cause. Look, look at him. I got a bigger cause, amen? Than, than, than what I'm living. Finish the sentence. Than what I'm living. Than what I'm living. I got a bigger cause than what I'm living. Amen? Now take a, dig, take, take a big deep breath. Oh, oh, that's right. COVID. Don't breathe on nobody. <laughs> Come on. If I got breath in my body, I still have hope. Amen? I still have hope. Amen? That's what, that's what the Word says. I still have hope, and you do too, amen? We all have hope. 